Today we live in a time riddled with fear. From the global fears of pandemics, economy crashes, to more personal fears, that of failure or loneliness. Is it possible to overcome our fear? That's what we're going to explore. Why is it that humans have fears? Are they part of the human condition, or are they learned? To find out, we must journey back in time to understand what shaped us as we evolved to become humans. Fear has been one of the most important tools for our survival. It's taken us from the oceans to the shores. In these stagnant waters, there was less oxygen, pushing us to reach for a new source, the air. Fear pushed us underground to escape the wrath of the dinosaurs. As scared mice-like creatures, our senses were heightened, enabling us to hear sounds from farther distances, smell more intricate smells, to see in greater detail. All arising as we strategize our path to survival, fearing the unforgiving environment. Giving birth to the modern day prefrontal cortex, the reason that we can think rationally about our world. It would become an advantage so important to our development that it would enable us to come together as a species and work towards developing the modern day. Fear has given us the ability to communicate. One of the most important adaptations. What does fear have to do with our ability to communicate so effectively? Wouldn't it have been easier to just roam around and eat other humans? Well, in a way, that's precisely what other mammals did becoming humans. Yet, we must have learned that help is an advantage when hunting. One plus one does not equal two, it equals three. The idea represented beautifully by the saying, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. However it happened, fear taught us that we could work together to protect ourselves and our loved ones. A salute to our big brains strategizing our way into protection. Today, we can thank the dinosaurs. We humans need fear to survive. Would we have shelters, farming, or technology if we weren't scared of dying? Evolution is based on a system of survival. Survival individually, along with survival as a species. The beauty of this system runs deep in our DNA. We're scared because all our ancestors before us were scared. There's a fine line between confidence and fear that gives us the ability to strategize just enough so that we can explore. Are we better off without fear? The saying, curiosity killed the cat, seems to point to an answer. Let's imagine you're a bird. You've grown up in an environment full of trees, an environment naturally protected from the modern day. Now, let's say these giant things show up unannounced one day. You may think back to all the other giant things you've encountered, bears and moose, and they're no threat to you. You go and explore, sitting there looking up at this giant. You decide to give it a name, Tractor. It seemed a name fitting as it leaves giant tracks behind it. A sudden sound and boom, you're dead. Now let's try another scenario. Let's imagine you're a bit wary of new things. You see these new tractors and they seem scary to you. Your friend calls you a wimp, but you can't help it. You fear these new giants for some reason. You observe from a distance while your friend goes and checks them out. They're so big. One moves and boom, your friend's dead. You feel sad yet lucky. You get bird married and have some bird sex and out pops a little you. A little you who is also a bit wary of giant new things. Now, you are at the beginning of a new generation of birds that aren't as likely to be killed by tractors. The question is not whether fear is necessary, but are your fears necessary? What fears are directing our lives based on our evolutionary history that don't make sense today? Fears we're born with as well as those learned. Fear is a predictive function. As we predict the amount of danger something might impose on us, we tread carefully into situations, 
Our emotions heighten our senses, storing the information at a higher priority. When our prediction's wrong, we have to readjust our fear. If we predict that we'll get hurt when talking about a subject, and we're not hurt, we'll be less scared to talk about that subject in the future. We must re-examine our fears, an easier task said than done. There are fears that are learned and those that are inborn, such as the fear of snakes and spiders. However, could it be that all our fears come in some form from our evolutionary history? To understand if this is the case, we must look to our primate cousins. Evidence suggests that a fear of spiders and snakes has actually helped our ancestors survive. However, there is a less obvious route to many of our fears. We are social animals, and we want to be accepted. Why is that? Fears like public speaking, standing up for others, loneliness, might all come from this need for acceptance. Where does it fit into our evolutionary history? As we evolved more and more towards social animals, we built complex social dynamics, otherwise known as tribes. Not fitting into the tribe could be very dangerous. If one of us went against the grain or stood out too much, he or she could be seen as a threat to the establishment. We could be ousted from the group, rendering us with two options, die or look for a new group. The outside world is far too dangerous for a naked animal with no claws, no scales, and no fangs. A very easy target when alone, yet an unstoppable force in a group. This then brings us back to fear, the one thing that holds us together. Fear, it seems, is built into our DNA. Or is it? Are there fears that have no basis on evolution? Looking into some of the craziest fears, it might seem to be possible. Papaphobia, the fear of the Pope, cannot have a basis on evolution, right? Well, the Pope, in some ways, may resemble a tribe leader. It goes hand in hand with an enormous amount of power. It's beneficial for the tribe, in some cases, to be scared of the leader in order to keep the tribe obedient. It could also come from a feeling of guilt, a fear that would be very beneficial in keeping one from acting selfishly among the tribe. In any case, one thing we can be pretty certain of is that fear serves to protect us whether it be rational or irrational. How is it that some can go through life with far less fear, while others are paralyzed by it? How can you have less fear day to day? Let's take a look at a type of therapy that exposes you to your fear, rendering it less intense. Exposure therapy lets you confront your irrational fears in a safe environment. Even though we might truly fear certain things, it can often be holding us back, initiating a process of predictive danger looping, intensely amplifying the fear without ever exposing ourselves to it. The mere thought of it can be debilitating, when it has no basis in reality. People can overcome incredibly deep-seated fears by exposing themselves to said fear little by little, breaking the negative feedback loop. This means that exposure may have an impact on one's level of fear, whether it be learned or inherent. Learned fear is a function that's built off of how the world works as you grow up. It acts as a scaffolding for the predictive nature of the environment you're born into. Humans are adaptable, and this function is a very clear representation of that ability. We are constantly refining our fears, determining whether or not they are helpful. Fear cannot be eradicated, yet our reaction to it can be dampened. Fear is both genetic and learned. It serves one of the most important functions in our evolutionary survival, without which we would never have decided to breathe oxygen. We would have never developed a brain. We would have never invented technology. It's a function that has enabled us to become the apex predator of the earth. It's created friendships and collaborations with other members of the primate family, and even at times with other species. Is it all good? No but you would not be here without it. Understanding that fear has helped us survive can help us determine the validity of our fears, exposing our nervous system to those fears that don't serve in the modern day. We are all riddled with fear, 
yet for the first time as humans. We are able to rationalize our way past this evolutionary function, hinting a brighter future. One where we're able to develop new fears as we explore further and further into the infinite beyond. Keep our curiosity alive. What are you scared of? Let me know in the comments below.